Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to our today's class. It's our seventh lesson on the fourth topic of home work, which is called work energy, power, and machines. As usual, let me comment by giving you the quote of the day, which states that motivation determines what you do, but attitude determines how well you do it. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at uh, further examples of some simple machines, and the first simple machine we are looking at is the screw so remember the screw has what we call the screw head and it also has what we call the pitch so pitch is simply defined as the distance between successive threads of a screw so for example the distance between this first thread of the screw and the second thread of the screw we call it the pitch so assuming the distance from the first thread to the second thread would be maybe uh, five centimeters then the pitch or let's say five millimeters then the pitch of that particular screw will be five millimeters so to find the velocity ratio of a screw we simply take the circumference of the screw head divided by the pitch so we know that circumference at uh, the screw head is usually circular in shape therefore we know that the circumference of a circle is given by 2 pi r or simply uh, pi d therefore the velocity ratio shall be given by 2 pi r divided by the pitch where r is simply this particular uh, distance of the head of that particular screw then when a screw is combined with a lever then we call it a screw jack then a screw jack is used for lifting some heavy loads for example some cars we have we can have uh, lorries or some other heavy machines so a screw jack is simply a screw that uh, we have added a lever on it so whenever we add a lever on a screw jack on um, a screw then it forms a screw jack so this is a typical example of a screw jack whereby we have just taken a screw then you have added a lever on it so if a screw jack uh, when we have a screw jack its velocity ratio shall be given by the only thing that changes is uh, that for r we simply use the uh, the length of that particular lever so but the velocity ratio shall be given by 2 pi r over the pitch only that for r we use actually the length of that particular lever that we have added that is for the case of a screw jack again the pitch is just the same the distance between successive threads of a screw then the other type of uh, mach simple machine is what we call the gears so we, we can have this particular the gear usually has the driver wheel and the driven wheel to understand this better just consider a bicycle yeah a bicycle usually has uh, that small part uh, whereby we attach uh, the pedal so uh, there is that small part where the pedals are usually attached that part we call it the uh, the sprocket wheel that is the sprocket wheel is a uh, sprocket is s p r o c k e so we have that small part where the pedals are usually attached we call it the sprocket wheel then we have the larger part whereby now the rear wheel or what we call the the crank wheel is attached so this is our upper that is the larger part so whenever you apply force on the pedals actually the smaller part or what we are calling the sprocket wheel this smaller part which is the driver wheel it actually rotates so because the effort is applied on the uh, effort and remember that is on the pedals and the pedals are attached on this particular smaller wheel which we are calling the driver wheel therefore the effort is being applied on the driver wheel so if you apply an effort on the driver wheel as the driver wheel rotates in the anti-clockwise direction as shown by this particular arrow that will cause the rear wheel to rotate in the uh, clockwise direction as shown by this particular arrow so we have the driver wheel that is where the effort is applied and the driven wheel whereby the load whereby represents our load so the velocity ratio for the gears is given by the number of teeth of the driven wheel divided by the number of teeth in the driving wheel so assuming maybe we had uh, 20 teeth in this particular driven wheel then we had maybe 10 teeth in the driver wheel so the velocity ratio will be 20 divided by 10 which gives us a velocity ratio of 2 the same same velocity ratio can as well be given by uh, the quotient between the revolutions made by the driver wheel divided by the revolutions made by the driven wheel so remember the drive 
the driver wheel or the the driver wheel is also called the driving wheel so the wheel that we apply the effort we call it the driver wheel or the driving wheel then the wheel that represents our load we call it the driven wheel the other simple machine is what we call the pulleys whereby we are saying that for pulleys the velocity ratio for a block and tackle system of pulleys will always be equal to the number of ropes or the number of strings which are supporting the load so to understand this better typical uh, systems so there are several systems of pulleys so the three common ones include one we have what we call a single uh, fixed pulley we have the single movable pulleys and lastly we have the block and tackle pulleys so for single fixed pulley this is a typical example showing us a single fixed pulley its velocity ratio will always be equal to one so the number of ropes supporting the load we only have one rope so the effort only contributes to the number of ropes which are supporting the load if it is acting in a direction opposite to the direction in which the load is moving or simply put the effort contributes to the uh, the number of strings supporting the load if it is acting upward or if it is acting in a direction which is opposite to the direction in which gravity is acting now we know that gravity always acts downwards that is it tends to pull objects towards the center of the earth so because in this case the effort is also acting downwards that is in a, in a direction similar to the direction of the gravity therefore the effort drop in this particular case does not contribute to the velocity ratio therefore the rope supporting the load is only this particular rope hence the velocity ratio is equals to the rope supporting the load which is only one rope now for a single movable pulley we can see that we can have this diagram whereby the effort is acting upward so we know that gravity acts downward or the weight of this particular load acts downward because we know that weight depends on gravity because weight is equal to mass of the body times the force of gravity on that particular uh, planet so because the gravity acts downwards or because the weight acts downwards and the effort is acting upward it simply means that the effort uh, rope contributes to the number of ropes which are supporting that particular uh, load so in this case the number of ropes or strings which are supporting the load there are two so we have this uh, rope here and this other rope for the effort so effort only contributes to the number of ropes supporting the load if it is acting upwards or if it is acting in a direction which is reversing the direction of action of the force of gravity like for this case gravity acts downwards but the effort is acting upward so because the effort is opposing or reversing uh, the direction of gravity therefore the effort contributes to the velocity ratio therefore velocity ratio is equals to two because the number of ropes supporting the load are actually two however for this particular diagram the effort is acting downwards that is in a direction similar to the direction of uh, action of gravity or in a direction similar to the direction in which our load is also acting so if the effort acts in the same direction with the direction of motion of the load or in the direction of gravity then in that case it does not contribute to the number of ropes supporting the load therefore the only uh, ropes which are supporting the load in this particular case there are only two we have this particular uh, string or rope here and this other string or rope here so we have said the effort in this case does not contribute to velocity ratio because it is acting in the direction of gravity or in a direction similar to the direction of motion of the load but in this case uh, the, the this particular rope contributes to uh, the velocity ratio because it is acting in a direction which is reversing the direction of action of the load because we know that the load will always uh, act downwards because of the weight we know that the weight always acts downwards because of gravity so whenever we have an effort reversing the direction of action of the load then it contributes to a uh, velocity ratio but whenever we have the effort acting in the same direction with gravity or acting in the, the same direction with the direction of motion of the load then in that case it does not contribute to velocity ratio therefore velocity ratio in this case is uh, is represented by only two ropes which are supporting the load therefore the velocity ratio will be two so for the block and tackle we have this diagram here again we can see that the final rope or the effort rope 
is acting downwards that is in a direction similar to the force of gravity so when the effort acts downwards or whenever the effort acts in a direction similar to, to the direction of action of the weight then it does not contribute to the velocity ratio therefore the only ropes uh, supporting the load or the only ropes contributing to velocity ratio we have this rope the other rope this rope and this fourth rope but the effort will not contribute to velocity ratio because it is acting downwards or because it is acting in the direction in which the weight of this particular load will also be acting therefore velocity ratio for this system will just be four we can look at a uh, further example uh, so here we are asked to determine the velocity ratio for each of the following system of pulleys so you just look at uh, the last uh, rope which is actually the effort rope so just a point to notice that when the effort is acting downwards it does not contribute to velocity ratio or when the effort is acting in a direction similar uh, to the direction of action of the force of gravity then it does not contribute to velocity ratio therefore because our final rope that is the effort is acting downwards the, in this case this particular rope will not contribute to velocity ratio therefore the only ropes that contribute to velocity ratio are this first rope the second rope the third rope and the fourth rope therefore velocity ratio will be equal to four in this diagram here we can look at the final rope that is the effort rope again it is acting downwards acting in the same direction with the direction of action of gravity therefore the effort e uh, will not contribute to velocity ratio therefore the only ropes which are supporting the load or the only uh, ropes which will contribute to velocity ratio will be the first rope the second the third and the fourth so effort will not contribute to vr velocity ratio because it is acting downwards then again in this case also the effort or the final rope is acting downwards therefore it does not contribute to velocity ratio again because it is acting in a, in the direction of the load because we know that the load is given by its weight uh, that is a mass times gravity and gravity acts downwards so if the load the force acting on the load the load is actually acting downwards also the effort is acting downwards therefore that effort does not contribute to uh, the rope supporting the load therefore the effort uh, will not be included in the velocity ratio therefore the only rope supporting the load is the first rope and the second rope therefore velocity ratio will be equal to two again in the last diagram also the effort is acting downwards therefore does not contribute to velocity ratio because it is acting in a direction similar to the direction of action of the weight or the direction of action of the force of gravity and we know that weight will always act in the direction of gravity therefore whenever you have the effort acting in a direction similar to the direction of the load or the, to the direction of gravity then that particular effort is not supporting the load and therefore that particular effort will not be included in the calculation of the velocity ratio again if you look at this particular rope also somehow it is straight it is not acting upward therefore it is not supporting the load because actually it is this rope that is coming at this particular point the direction is uh, towards the right hand side so again right hand side simply means it is coming to act downward therefore uh, this rope is also its direction is somehow downward that is towards the right coming bending downwards therefore this rope does not contribute to velocity ratio this rope does not also contribute to velocity ratio because the direction of action is in the direction of gravity so the only ropes which are supporting the load we have this particular rope this rope and also this other rope you can even see their effort are acting upward therefore they are supporting our load therefore the number of ropes or the number of uh, strings which are supporting the load are one two and three therefore the velocity ratio of the system uh, in this case will be three thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson i do not take it for granted but we have the quote of the day which we need to discuss so the quote of the day stated that motivation determines what you do but attitude determines how well you do it so the quote is just encouraging us to develop a positive attitude towards every task we choose to do in our daily life. So uh, this, is, uh, this is because a positive attitude 
will always help us to develop the right mindset which will be which will propel us towards self development yeah because when your attitude is positive your mindset towards doing that particular work will also be positive and of course you will reap the benefits because when you are doing something with your whole heart with a positive attitude you are likely to get better results and lastly remember that a dream does not become a reality through magic instead a dream becomes a reality through sweat through hard work and through determination thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson i do not take it for granted in case you are new to the channel kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you will get you will always get notified if you know any student or anyone that you honestly think could benefit from this content kindly kindly share the link or refer them to kind tuition academy thank you very much for your continued support i've receiving some positive uh, comments the views are increasing i do not take it for granted uh, uh, so i really i really i really appreciate so i think uh, until next time this is kind tuition academy